Double congruence proofs are some of the hardest proofs we'll have to do in this course. Uh, sometimes it's necessary to prove multiple triangles congruent, so it's really important to make a plan before actually starting to write a proof out. So if we take a look at uh, this example here, our end goal is to prove MX is congruent to PX. So this piece here. So it might be a good idea to actually figure out which triangles eventually we might need to prove congruence. So PX is contained in triangle PSX and MX is con contained in triangle MSX. So right here. So eventually we are going to need to prove those two triangles congruent. We might not be able to right away though. So if we take a look at our givens here, we have RS is perpendicular to MP. So we can get right angles out of that. Okay, good, so that angle is in our triangle, so that's good. Next we have MR is congruent to PR. That doesn't help us directly because it's not contained in the yellow or the blue triangle. Uh, so we have a little bit of an issue, we might have to do some more work. And that's all of our givens. But if these two sides are congruent, then these two angles opposite would be congruent as well. But again, these angles are not contained in the triangles we really want to prove congruent. But if you notice, we actually have enough information to prove different triangles congruent. So if we take a look here, we have the right angles. We have angle M congruent to angle P. And we have side MR congruent to PR. That's enough. We can do the method side angle angle to prove those triangles congruent. Even though those aren't the ones that we want necessarily, it will help us because once we prove these triangles congruent, all of their parts are going to be congruent as well. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles will also be congruent. So let's take a look. Uh, let me maybe highlight those. Okay, so we're going to prove this triangle and this triangle. So that's what we're going to have to do first. And then you might notice that they actually share, by using CPCTC, we can get this part here, because that's actually contained in both triangles, so that, so that will help us. So if we use CPCTC to get MS congruent to SP, that's going to help us because that is in the triangles we want to prove. So we can get this side and this side. We already have the right angle. And then you might notice that we also have the reflexive property. So then that will be enough and we can do side angle side. So we need to prove this first triangle, these first two triangles, in order to use CPCTC to get other sides in these second triangles. So now that we made our plan, let's go ahead and write this out. Okay, so I just went ahead and put our markings back down. And every time we go ahead and write something in our proof, I'm going to highlight it on our plan to show that we took care of it. So we have our given MS is perpendicular to MP, and we know that gives us right angles. So perpendicular lines form right angles, and those right angles are congruent. So I'm going to mark that off with a highlight to show that we went ahead and took care of that. We have MR is congruent to PR. And that's just a given, so don't need any more of an explanation for that. Then we have RMS is congruent to RPS. And our reason for that is 
If two sides in a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent as well. Okay, now if you notice uh, that big triangles, those big half triangles, we have all of our pieces, so we can go ahead and actually prove those by using side angle angle. So RMS is congruent to triangle RPS by the side angle angle method. And the reason why we did that, the reason why we said we were going to do that in the plan was so that we would be able to get all of uh, the additional parts of those triangles to be congruent as well. And the part that we really needed was MS. So I'll even mark it off in here as well. We wanted this to be congruent to this. The reason why we specifically picked those parts were because they were in the smaller triangles that contained what we wanted to prove here. So we can go ahead and say MS is congruent to PS because of CPCTC. And then we have the reflexive property. So XS is congruent to XS, reflexive property of equality. And now we have enough information so we can prove those triangles congruent by side angle side. And now once we prove those triangles, we can get our end pieces that we really wanted. So we really wanted MX and PX, and now we can go ahead and get those because of CPCTC. So we had to prove two triangles congruent in order to get what we really wanted in the end.